السلام عليكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Dear friends, colleagues, uh, brothers and sisters, wherever you are, whenever you are, I greet you with the greeting of Islam. Peace be upon you and also wishing you maybe good morning or good evening or good night whenever you are, inshallah, in different zonal area. Today, my talk will be about who is the director, who is the chairman, and who is the chief executive officer. First of all, I'd like to thank my colleague, uh, Mehmet Youssef and Ali Shawa, for helping me to prepare this uh, presentation to you. And I hope that you'll be able to join the Zoom, inshallah. Why I'm talking about this? Because through my experience over the last uh, 35, 40 years, I have been mixing with uh, listening to, uh, seeing uh, people who are in the chairmanship of the organization or the presidency, and they are mixing their roles with other roles, unfortunately. That's why after seeing and experiencing all what has been happening in our organization, whether it's in Europe, it's happening here in Europe, or in the Middle East or in the Far East, we're still mixing the cards or pass the responsibility and bypass the responsibility of others. Let me go with you to a very simple definition, who is the manager and who is the director? The manager or the executive manager, if you can see it on the slide, he or she is the responsible individual for managing the employees. They have employees and they manage them on a day-to-day basis, working under him or under herself on a regular basis and responsible for the execution of the executive plan of the organization. So they are hands-on managing the executive in the organization. I hope. The director, but the director or the chief executive or the chairman is the leader of the organization, is not a manager. It's a big difference between a leader like yourself or a manager. Each one of us love to become a leader, but leader has to have quality, quality in the individual. He or she, the leader of the organization, college general supervisor, superintendent, mentor, guide, instructor, advisor, all these names for a leader. Who is directing, directing, directing the directors? And he or she is not managing the individuals, but they are directing the directors or the top management. And is uh, not responsible for the front management of, of the organization on a daily basis, but directing the senior executive team of the organization towards what? The strategic direction, the vision, the new opportunities, threats, and the other initiatives. So he's like the captain. The captain actually directing his team to go this way or this way, but not actually uh, the, the managing it on a day in, in, in a, what do you call it, micromanagement. Not micromanaging, not micromanaging, not hands-on. I'm going to talk about some characteristics of such individual uh, who is a director managing the organization. But I am going to talk especially on trust. You know, if you remember Joe Biden uh, opening speech, he was talking about trust building. The strongest country on earth, and this president talked about trust building. Okay. Trust for me is crucial for leadership. One of the most important distinctive features of the director or the leader of the organization is trust building through these five or six points. First of all, he himself has to be confident. He has to have the self-confidence in himself or herself. And he has to gain the trust of his colleague or her colleague in the organization. He or she has to trust what? It aims to believe in it. Aims, objectives, message, values of the organization, as well as the volunteers who are going to carry 
the name of the organization and going to wear the T-shirt with the logo of the organization. The senior leaders inside the organization and in other organizations as well, the sympathizers. This process of trust building has to be there, there 24 seven during the time of his or her leadership. Keep building the trust, keep building the process of trust building between you and everybody around you. Local communities, suppose that your organization working in, uh, in Africa, in South Sudan, in Nigeria, North Nigeria, where the, some of the conflicts, armed conflicts there, in Yemen, or inside Syria, or anywhere, you have to gain the trust of the local communities. Because these local communities are very much, very much, very much need to support you. Without their support, there's no success for the organization. And local communities have a lot of human resources, not only human resources, knowledge, experience. And they will be able to facilitate and build the success story of the organization. Unless they trust, if they don't trust you, you cannot build this success story in the local area, which actually I mentioned some of them in different parts uh, of the world. Uh, also, you have to believe and trust your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. And we have to learn and trust ourselves from how we manage to succeed in the past and learn from the other experience of others. So this kind of trust building process has to be with you, Mr. Leader or Miss Leader or Mrs. Leader, there 24 seven. We have, we have to, we have to learn how to build the trust between us, us and the people around us, even, the organizations who are competing uh, with us as well. I made this point distinctive and more visible to all of you because trust is considered to be the foundation of what? Trust is going to be the foundation of building a successful, effective, leading organization. A successful, effective, leading organization. This is the criteria number one, but actually make it distinctive. Other criteria of the director, can we change the slides, please? Slides. Other criteria, you can see it here. First one on the slide, having relevant experience. It's not good to be a manager of a steel company or an steel company or a factory and people, because you are a successful manager, in managing the steel company, they bring you to humanitarian organization. It's not, that doesn't work this way because the philosophy, the culture, the thinking, the, the people who are benefiting from the organization in the steel industry are different to the humanitarian organization. It's good, but not good enough that you tell me, okay, fine, uh, this actually happened to many organizations in the field. Uh, in, in the Gulf, especially. Oh, he or she used to be a very top manager in this oil company, in this gas company. So what? I'm talking about the material organization, different principles, different process of thinking, different culture, different values. Oh, he or she are coming from America with a master degree, good, but not good enough. Unless they have the relevant experience, relevant relevant experience, relevant experience, not somebody just jump uh, on, on the top of the organization and say that I am coming from America, I am coming from London, I am so what? Big so what? This number one, relevant experience. He or she has to be good listeners. You know, you have got in, in the big organization might have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 500, 200, 600, whatever it is. You have to be able to listen, to listen to the people from the 
ground floor, from the shop floor to the top floor, from the cleaner to the porter, to the guard, to the, to the executives, to the, the directors with you. You have to listen. You have to listen to them. You have to comprehend what they are telling you. Then you, after comprehending, you'll be able to respond to their cause or their ideas and to be benefiting from them, not because she is a cleaner or he is a cleaner. You don't listen to them. You undermine them. No, they might have the brilliant, the most brilliant idea uh, under suggestion coming to you. You have to be patient, lenient, flexible, not rigid. Quite often when people got this director job and the chairmanship, of them, they may have, they will have masky face like myself, says, mm, does not smile, does not crack jokes, does not say good morning, mm, mm. look very, very serious all the time, scaring people, scary, 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 no good. Be flexible, show leniency, and have vision. I don't want anyone in any organization to work there without having vision. Not having eyesight. No, 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 have vision, insight. There's a big difference between eyesight and insight. All of us have eyesight, but don't have insight. For the director, he has, or she has to have this eyesight. This is very specific to the organization. Having full knowledge of the history of the organization, the aims, the objectives, the message, the values, the strategies, the partners of the organization, it is horizontal spread. Maybe this organization working in 50 countries. He or she have to be aware of the dimension of the operation of uh, his organization and the program. And vertical elevation where? In the depth of the thoughts, of the values, and the faith of the organization. When we talk about the faith and the values, it's vertical. When we talk about the geography and the spread, it's horizontal. He or she has to understand, the, to comprehend, then to contemplate on this, actually, uh, before accepting the, uh, the, before accepting the chairmanship or actually the directorship role. Understanding the characteristic, each organization has a character, and each character of us has characteristics. Sometimes people call you moody, uh, very temperamental, uh, very nice, uh, very uh, considering. The, so the, the, each, each organization has the characteristics and the character and the identity. Some would like to have his organization, or the organization is identity. Yeah, faith is an identity, value is an identity. Uh, 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 human rights is an identity. All this identity of the she or he, when they sit down on the driving seat, they have to have to understand the identity of the organization. It's a structure, the hierarchy inside the organization. Number seven, uh, this actually should uh, be able to organize regular communication meetings with the staff to keep the information flow going top down and bottom up. To be believe, not only in the organization now, to believe in the values of the sector. Suppose you are working for a commercial company. So there's a sector for that. Suppose you are working for industrial company. There's a sector for that. Suppose you are working for uh, a factory steel factories, like I said, or car industry. So there's a sector. So you have to believe, actually, in the uh, values of the sector. For the humanitarian and development uh, sector, we have to believe in the principles and the values of the humanitarian development and social sector. Sector, not only the organization. Because a part of your job, Mr. Director and Mr. Chairman, or Mr. whatever you call your name, whatever you call her name, you will be defending the sector. You will be defending the sector. Believing in impartiality, this actually was what they call it, humanitarian principle, impartiality, neutrality, transparency, accountability, communication, networking, 
partnership, build the partnership and coalition. Be all this. You are not there to be the king of the kings and the, the, to detach your organization from others. We are the most successful. We don't want to connect and communicate to others. This will be the biggest failure. The successful director or chairman or chief executive will be able to connect, communicate it, and build partnership and coalition with others, not to isolate his organization, actually, and sideline his organization from the others, or to keep his organization or her organization away from the others. Number nine, you as a director have to give offer sacrifices in time, in effort, in thoughts, in salaries, and in overworking. What kind of leadership if they found you, Mr. or Miss or Mrs. Uh, President or Director, leaving before five o'clock if you are in the UK, leaving before two o'clock if you are in the Middle East or other places? What is this? Especially if you are working for charitable organization, you get your job description right, you get your salary right, but when it needed you, it needs you to stay more, you stay more, and you work more, and you do more, and you deliver more. Sacrifices, giving, gifting, and show true altruism. To believe in empowerment. It's not everything being done by yourself or by, my, by, or by herself. No, you have to depend on people who you are empowering. Delegation of responsibility and remote management through other directors. You become result oriented, not hands on oriented. To be recognizing and respecting the others. Somebody is succeeding, achieving something, you have to go and recognize and respect their achievement, whether they are staff of ours or they are staff of the organization or this other organization who are opponent to us or competing with us. We have to recognize their achievement and respect them and motivate everybody. Motivation is not only for your organization, to motivate your organization, your staff your field workers, even the people who are benefiting from the organization, the volunteers, the local community to be motivated because if you motivate the local community, you will get out, out of them the best, the best out of them because they have the wealth. Like actually you go to a place and you keep digging, you get the gold, you get the diamond. You cannot get the gold from the surface, and you cannot get the diamond unless you go deep in the depth of the ocean. To be, as I mentioned before, far-sightedness, you can see beyond. Having a vision, creative vision, you have this kind of creativity because you see things before it happens, and you plan for things to happen. This kind of far-sightedness and vision and wisdom has to be there. Mr. or Mrs. Director. We don't want somebody who is just a minister somewhere else and to bring him, the, uh, him or her and say, yes, he was a minister. So what? So what? Minister, prime minister is a political decision. For our organization is not, which is humanitarian or social or developmental. It could be good, but not good enough. I want somebody from the sector to enable me or to enable me to go forward. He was successful in a company or in a ministry, good. But does he know what we are talking about in our humanitarian, social, or developmental organization or not? If it does not, thank you. We don't want you. He or she has to regularly keep reading. I used, I used to have a good friend of mine uh, between me and him was about 20, 25 years, I think. And he's a good reader. And I'm a bad reader. And every day he reads a book, or every two days he reads a book, and come and tell me, said, please, tell me what you read. I cannot read, like you. But he is good, re good reader. And good, good readership, good readership, build the knowledge. But this knowledge has to marry the experience, has to be implemented. 
not to be just academic for the sake of being academia or being academic, but academic for the sake of being operational, practical academia. Reading, understanding, extrapolation. You read a book. Yes? What is the lessons coming out of the book? Of the experience, the new ideas, the depth of the knowledge? How did you read between the lines of the experience of those people who wrote this book? And to start extracting opinion from your reading ability. I said it having the knowledge of and respecting the local community, I mentioned many time, local community cultures and different uh, field offices. Uh, you cannot also, as a director or as a chairman, you, ha you have to be, have the ability or the quality to represent your organization on the international arena. Not only on the local, on the international. I'm going to see if I missed something important. Objectives, flexibility, and please, okay. All right. Number 16, being able to represent the organization in the international conferences and meetings. So, okay, fine. Where's the problem? And somebody of you will say, okay, okay, thank you. All this, what is the problem? I tell you what's the problem. The problem lies when the directors or the CEO or the senior people uh, start to play the role of the executives, interfere in their role, undermining the response, uh, the, the, the authority, and over, uh, over, over actually turning uh, the decisions. I mentioned a few examples. I used to have two experiences, which I mentioned, both of them. One of them from the, the, from the East, the chairman and the founder love to see every donor coming to the organization. Love to open uh, every uh, 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 envelope at the time of the envelopes, take the checks and, and love to go around and interfering at the level of the shop floor of everything. Okay. The same was happening to another one from, from Europe. So both, both mentality, same. And both of them were the top, unfortunately. One time we had a difference or a disagreement about uh, something in the organization. Because we were the implementing agency and the organization from the east was the funding agency. And I was trying to make an agreement with Mr. President or the chairman in this organization to become hands off and leave the field work to be done by the head of the, uh, of the operation in our organization and the head of the operation is organized. He refused. He refused totally. Totally, totally. I said, I cannot sit down with you to talk about how much is the sponsorship of an orphan. What's the program? So you rule my role. You rule my role is to go, our role is to go together if we're going to work for Bosnia, we work in, 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 in Albania, we work in other countries to see the strategy. What do you want to do together? Maybe in education, sector, maybe in water and health and sanitation, maybe in protection of children and so on, so on, so He refused. So we froze in the relationship with them. Signing checks and bank transfers. This, these are some of the problem. Signing checks, bank transfers, they love, some people love to put their fingerprint on every transfer. Even holiday requests. Somebody is working under another manager in his or her department. The big man would like to see why he's taking two days extra. 
No, no, it's not your responsibility. He or she has their line manager. Centralization. He wants everything to come back, or she wants everything to come back to her or him. Wrong. You're strangling the organization. Does not believe in delegation of authority or empowerment. And uh, as I mentioned, reading Muslims. These are some of the problems, not all the problems. And they're still happening. And they're still happening. And I'm admitting it is still happening, unfortunately. Bypassing the authority, as I mentioned, of the executives. But what do you mean? So uh, instead of asking the line manager to come and sit down with him or with her, he found one of the employees, you ask him to come, I need to talk to you. This will make friction between the line manager and the employee and between the line manager and the director. It's not your responsibility to go on to talk to somebody who is managed by somebody else. Talk to the manager, direct the manager, reprimand the manager, but not the employee. Not following the, the rules, the budgets, the plans, the procedures, the strategies of the organization, the policies. No, no. Why should I? Yalla, let us do it. And we fail. Let us do it and we fail because there is no follow up of haphazardly non organized action. Interfering, some, some problem happened between middle, middle managers, employees, and he interferes. And instead of going to the human resources, or to the personnel, or to the line manager, to tell them I have heard so and so, please give me a report. Through who? Through the line manager, or through the human resources, or through the personnel. He put or she puts her feet down and interferes. That's wrong. Is some of the problems. Sometimes people love to employ somebody because, like, actually, uh, in Arabic, we say that. Uh, of itching hands. Ah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We are, we are, we are hurrying up as if something uh, itching your hand or your fingers or your. Uh, do it. And by the time we promise in an informal interview, you know what happened? In informal interviews, you interview an excellent individual without consulting the head of the department or the head of the unit or the head of the division that he's going to be joining. And all of a sudden, after agreeing with the man or the woman, uh, you go, you go, you go what? You go and tell the head of division, please em uh, uh, employ this one. Why? You have seen through your vision somebody that's going to work with me. So why should I employ him? And this actually okay, employing new staff without following the policies, procedures, or consulting them. This is happening. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, friends and colleagues, and whatever you are, if we talk about social organization, if we talk about humanitarian organization, it is not your money. Take it for me. And if you don't like what I'm saying, you can meet me, can meet me around. Anywhere. Anywhere. It's not your money. It's not your organization. It is public fund. It's public organization. It's public trust. Behave yourself. Behave yourself when you take the responsibility of the chairmanship or the directorship of such organization. Behave yourself. Or if you don't behave yourself, you can see me around. And I'm talking from experience, not reading some, some uh, what do you call it, books or magazines. No, I'm not a good reader. I'm not a good reader. I'm not a good reader. These are some of the grave issues of concern created by some of the directors. Oh, khalas. what is the solution then? Number one, which is extremely important, particularly to the organization in the East, in the east or in the south, create and write and follow a proper watertight job description. 
to every employee employee so this is my job description i'm accountable to my manager or to my director i have authority because i have responsibility in my job description there's two parts there's responsibility and authority so you have in the organization one of the solution points is to create and follow the job description watertight with a clear responsibility authority and land management this is number one having inside the organization what we call it annual plans policies procedures strategies clear aims objectives vision and message because otherwise if this is not there everybody will go to different direction everybody will take it to different direction having detailed number three detailed detailed written annual budget which is extremely important for each unit each department and each division what does it mean because if i have a division i'm responsible for the division which is the big and in my division there about three departments in each department there's three or four units each this budget the detailed budget has to go for the unit once it's signed for every unit for every department for every division the line manager of the unit or the department or the division does not come back to his boss he or she only goes to the financial officer who have the budget details with a code to spend to the unit or to spend to the department or to spend to the uh, division not going back i had this discussion and argument with some of the chairmen in different global or international organizations i said you pay money to ceo and use them as secretaries what is this if you will bring them to you to ask you to sign up for everything or to wait for a phone call from you they are secretaries or should I give them all this authority and this money and they are useless or you are useless as a chairman you know why because you don't believe in empowerment and in delegation having this written annual plan and budget having internal periodic management review for each department and each unit maybe every six to six months each one of them will have this kind of review uh, in uh, for each department if possible and this is different from the annual performance appraisal annual performance appraisal like 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 i'm working for a unit as an officer or coordinator so my boss which is the line manager will make the annual uh, perform the performance appraisal for me every year so i could be promoted or demoted it's different the training program has to have a budget inside the organization for maybe it could be five to ten percent you have to have a ten because what is the point of employing of employing of employing of employing people 20 years ago and not giving them any any capacity building and training program and after 20 years you say oh my god they are useless they are not up to date because you have not given them the chance to be trained you did not have a, a, a program for capacity building of those employees and they have seen it with my own eyes i'm just taking my glasses with my own eyes i saw the same employee maybe 15 20 years ago then after 20 years ago they kick him out why because he's not suitable not suitable because you were not a suitable chairman or a not suitable ceo or not suitable director i did not give them the chance to be trained uh, complaint system creating a proper confidential complaint system while ah, not just anybody making complaint while empowering and protecting whom the complainant and if i submit a complaint against my boss i have to be protected that's why a lot of people are scared to write any complaint especially when it comes to the chairman 
to the director or to the boss against them. You have to empower them, tell them to feel safe to speak and to save their jobs, to save their jobs, not to, to say to save to keep their jobs. Number seven, uh, planning regular meeting on different levels, unit, department, division, as well as organization. And this regular meeting to study the achievement, the failures, uh, to, 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 to express and exercise the level of transparency of the organization. Somebody can stay comfortably in the middle of a room with 100 people or 50 people or 70 people and will be able to criticize his boss or the boss of the organization. As, as happened in the good old days in the Arabia, when they're criticizing the Khalifa in the good old days. Now nobody can talk. You lose your job or you put him in, in jail, unfortunately. Transparency uh, to learn. You see, this kind of, uh, I remember somebody used to call it brown, brown bag, or maybe lunchtime uh, weekly meeting, or maybe monthly meeting, or whatever it is. It will bring the whole organization to listen to a new experience, either from a guest or from the local staff. This kind of actually learning collectively from the experience of different departments as well as different organizations. Having open discussion to discuss what? Different new initiatives. If you are testing a new initiatives, ask your staff, the brains inside the organization, different new initiatives, strategies, strategic direction, plans, programs, threats, opportunities. Share the people. You don't know where the solution will come from. It might not come from you as a chairman or director. It might come from the cleaner or from the junior staff. It's number seven. Number eight, planning for and implementing. This is very, 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 very important. Extremely important, what I'm going to say now. Future leadership program. I've been discussing this with some of my colleagues since 2004. Be very honestly, wanted to plan this 2004, 17 years ago. Anyway, it didn't happen. It didn't happen, unfortunately. But this program, future leadership program, will enable the organization to do what? To continuously create young leadership who can lead the organization with different and more suitable culture. I'm a foreigner. I came to UK 43 years ago as a foreigner. Okay. My sons, my daughters, and sons and daughters of my colleagues are different culture. They can lead, they have to lead. Not they can lead, they have to lead. Create young leadership who can lead the organization with different and more suitable culture, more suitable information technology, different values, different vision that will meet the contemporary philosophy of the surrounding social climate. Different, but you have to prepare them. That like like if, if you remember the say or the proverb of uh, Hazrat Ali, uh, salam, anhu, used to say, uh, for the non-Muslim brothers and sisters, uh, Hazrat Ali, one of the caliphs of the Muslim, used to say, prepare your children for the generation, for their generation, not for your generation. They cannot be like yourself, exactly. Because I am 50 and my son is five or 10. So you cannot pre prepare him for my generation thinking, but his to his or her generation to enable them to live inside their generation, understanding the mechanics surrounding them. So future leader program. We are recycling employees among this, the handful or a dozen of organization in UK. Needless to say, in the East, we don't create leaders because it needs, it needs, it needs to have a proper solid program to be followed to start creating future leadership. Uh, okay. Number nine is very important. It's one of my dreams. To change the job description of the director. At least 50 to 70% of his or her time should not be doing the executive role. And the, the other 30 to 40 percent should be directing the top management. Clear? 
50, say about, say about 60 to 70 percent doing non-executive role, but the 30 to 40 percent will be directing the managers or the executives or the top managers. I'm talking directing them and following up with them. Let me tell you what this kind of job description will entail to, uh, to be a part of the solution. First of all, I mentioned reading and writing. Reading and writing as a program, daily program for the CEO, for the director, and for the chairman. We don't want ignorant people to run our organization. It's only reading and writing, analyzing. Analyzing and learning from different experiences. This is number one. Frequent travels, because he is who he, is, he or she is not responsible for the floor management or the job, the 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 yeah the floor management. Travel to attend international conferences. Learn from any in the international conference. Any presenter will give you his or her experience in twenty years within his fifteen to twenty minutes of talk. I used to learn this when I was in Davos. You remember Davos in World Economic Forum or any other UN or any other European Union or any other uh, international, uh, whoever speaks there, they speak volume of their experience. Uh, meetings, visiting field offices, also visiting field offices is very important because you, uh, you touch the ground. You feel the pulse of the people, so it'll enable you to create a vision because we agreed before that you are a visionary. Formulating and proposing new initiatives and paying you all this money, putting you on the top of the organization to lead and to speed the process of development of the organization by creating new initiatives and discussing it, new initiatives, values, and vision. Discovering new opportunities and threats and come to the organization, telling them there's an opportunity here. So there's maybe a lot of opportunities in this area because there's a lot of funding there. So be, care, be, be, be ready or there's a threat in this area. So this is the, you are going to be like actually uh, the discoverer and reporting. Building partnership and coalition with others. This is your role. That's why sitting at, Sitting, opening an uh, envelope or uh, uh, nagging people inside the organization, what for? What for? We well, have not been paying you to do that. Building partnership, coalition with other organizations. Uh, gaining financial and social and moral political support. You go and meet ministers, prime ministers, uh, presidents, uh, decision makers to win support, political, social. You go and meet journalists. You go and make interview on the television. You go and do all these sort of things to make to build this kind of fortress around your organization. The point is coming back into future leaders, discovering, training, and mentoring. 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 And preparing future young leaders from within the organization or from outside the organization. I put it in the job description of the director. Sharing experience. Any experience you have is not yours. It, is, it belongs to the community. It belongs to the public. It belongs to the organization. You have to keep sharing it on a regular basis. Even sharing this experience with other organizations. When it comes to research, which most of our organizations, unfortunately, do not invest money in research. Do not invest money in research at all. Whenever we call about research, say, oh my God, it's not good. I'm telling you, research is a money making machine. Because if you, sir, discover a big problem in certain parts of the world and started to find the solution for it and have partners to put the plan for this roadmap of the solution, before anybody else, you would be able to present this to governments, to organizations for, for great funding. And I mentioned this many times before in some of the examples in Pakistan. 
poverty PP poverty alleviation fund uh, Pakistan poverty alleviation fund PPF and the uh, chair there Kazi uh, 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 brother Kazi they invested maybe hundred thousand dollar on doing a big research on a social program and they gain more than a million dollars by the end of the year. And other organizations, Oxfam is doing the same, Save the Children is doing the same, uh, uh, Plan International, all they invest in research. All your programs should be research based oriented. Advocating for whom? For the rights of the most marginalized disenfranchised communities inside the poorest communities, refugees, internal displacement camps, and in particular, the most brutalized persecuted minorities, such as in Kashmir and as in uh, Uyghur and in Rohingya, which is Myanmar. Uyghur, Rohingya, and Kashmir. And maybe Syria and others as well, as well, as well. Supporting the local governments, this is a duty on you. You go to work in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a very underdeveloped country, you have to support the local government and municipalities in poor countries and visualizing their future vision, training local staff, local civil service organizations, and local civil servants. This is your duty because you, have the man, you are the man with the vision or you are the woman with the vision. This is the job description of the director. So my message, I talk now from you uh, 46 minutes. Give me another four or five minutes, inshallah. We are here, my final message, trying to create organizations that can serve, build, and sustain societies. I say it again. We are here, myself and you, trying to create organizations that serve, build and sustain societies, not organization to serve individuals, to serve organizations, to or other organizations, to serve political parties or certain ethnicities or religious groups and organizations. No, we are here for the society, for the country as a whole, as a country for the whole. OK? So you. It's myself, my mission now is we, we must build such organization to build society, to be enable them to build nations and states in the future. We are trying to create organizations that can serve, build and sustain societies, not serving individuals or other organization or other political parties or certain ethnicities or religious groups and organization. And these, listen to this, are considered to be very important social structure in cementing the greater societal foundation of our nation and our country. We need it if we want to build a nation and a country because it's cementing the, the foundation of the social infrastructure. Our society, in our current situation now, needs such structured organization that can build different social service delivery societal paths. Difficult to say it, but I'll say it again. Our society around us in our current situation needs such a structured, structured organization that can build different social service Delivery societal path. What this societal path will provide? Providing services needed for every citizen of the country. This societal path, organization will create the path, the path will produce the social services to the site. To overcome the challenges of building this social infra foundation, we have to prepare what the future leaders for the third time in my talk about in my talk I talked about the future leaders young people your daughter your son your cousin your nephew your niece everyone any young individual 
You have to prepare them for the future. So they have to be ready for the future to come. To overcome these challenges, the, to overcome the challenges of building this social foundation, we have to prepare the future leadership of the generation to come that can successfully, continuously, and successively build and lead this societal path. Societal path without young leaders is, a, is, is, is not good enough. Each one of us, if we consider ourselves as a leader, each one of us in the leadership have to pass it is leadership position to the future generations and not to follow what others were following in the past. As the Arab proverb mentioned, and even the Holy Quran, the Arab proverb say, my way or the highway. Anna Mumbai Tufan, no. Or the Quran said in Surah Al Araf 38, every time a new nation enters, it curses its sister nation that went before until they are all together in the fire. No, you have, uh, let me get, uh, you have, this is the laying stick, you have to give it to the second one after you, and the second give it to the third one, and so on, in, in the late, in the late team. To overcome the challenges of building this social foundation, we have to prepare the future leadership of the generations to come that can successfully, continuously, and successively build and lead this societal path. Each one of us in the leadership position have to pass its leadership position to the future generations and not to follow what others were following in the past, as mentioned in the Arab proverb and the Holy Quran, say, my way or the highway, or in the Holy Quran, every time a new nation enters, it curses its sister nation that went before until they are all together in fire. Al-A'raf 38. In my message also, leading society is difficult. To lead is not a joke. It's not one-way system. That's why uh, in, in the Holy Quran, when Allah SWT had offered this kind of responsibility to the mountains, uh, to uh, they offered this, this responsibility to the mountain, to the skies, they refused. They knew. They knew the enormity of the responsibility and the burden of the responsibility. Leading society is difficult. Heavy responsibility. And mission sometimes impossible to accomplish. Leadership is the cause. That's why most of the great people become shy of taking the leadership because of the enormity of the responsibility and the burden will be put on their shoulder by the people. Suppose you are, people are very happy to say that I am leading a country of 100 million people. You know what I say? You are not donkey, not monkey. Donkey and monkey better than you. You know what? You are responsible for every individual. As Omar said, in the good old days, if a mule fall down in Iraq, I'm going to be responsible for it while, I, while, while I'm in Medina. You want to be responsible for 50, 50 million? Be. But you be responsible for everything for them. That's why leading society, society is, is a difficult, heavy responsibility, and mission sometimes impossible to accomplish. But we have to prepare for such a mission and most of the time, the most suitable, credible, integral individuals, regardless of their culture, values, histories, and belief. You have to be preparing over to this integral, credible individual. Our country should be treated like this pot. You know, when you want to cook something, like uh, you want to cook something, uh, you, you bring the pot and you want to cook meat with uh, 
with okra or with bees or with tomato and, and, and you mix everything together to bring the, the new flavor. Our country should be like the pot where all of our values, cultures, habits, histories, and manners will be melting together to create the characteristics, to create the characteristics of it is identity. For each identity, there's characteristics. Not only of the country, but of the citizens as well. I'll say it again. Our country should be like the pot, where all of our values, cultures, habits, histories, manners will be melting together to create the characteristics of its identity and the identity of its citizens. If we want to build a nation or a society, we have to build whom? The able individuals who can create and build this geometric structured component, which I mentioned a month ago. Geometric structured components inside the societal path of such a nation or society. I'll say it again, but if you want to know what geometry and others, there's uh, uh, one or two talks, three talks about it. If you want to build a nation or a society, we have, if we want to build a nation or society, we have to build the able individuals who can create and build these geometric structured components inside the societal path of such a nation and society. This structured component will be able, will be able to change the clusters of people living on a piece of land into society and the nation. These structured components will be able to change the clusters of people living on a piece of land into societies and then nations. No matter how long, no matter how much challenges we face and the burden we carry for endless period of time. No matter. We have to build it. We have to build it. We have to build it. To conclude my final verse, nation building is a life building mission for sustainable societies by the credible individuals. If we don't have credible individuals, we cannot build the nation or the society. Nation building is a life building mission for sustainable societies by the credible individuals. I thank you very much for being with me today. I hope that you have uh, uh, joined the Zoom. If not, We'll be able to send you the recording maybe by tomorrow, inshallah. Uh, we'll post it, inshallah. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.